Hi, my name is Paul Allison. I'm the tech liaison for the New York City Writing Project. And, oh, 11 years ago, started a site called youthvoices.net and uh, along with Chris Sloan in Salt Lake City uh, and many, many others, uh, I've been building the site now for over a decade. And I want to just share a few things and um, have some old video and some new video and um, <laughs> just want to show you how we start with questions, how we think about um, inquiry and starting where students passions are, where their interests are, where their curiosities are. And um, yeah, let me show you a video, very brief video from this summer where I explain what Youth Voices means to me. Um, and then we'll jump in and, and look at our first assignment, 10 Self-10 World Questions and Free Writing, and move out toward um, a more complete picture of uh, what an inquiry project might look like. Thanks for hanging with me here. See you soon. Youth Voices is a school-based social network started by a group of teachers from the National Writing Project. The program is dedicated to bringing students and teachers together to create an open forum for discussion of current events, multimedia projects, or even sharing free writing projects such as poems and short stories. I'm really passionate about Youth Voices, but it's not just a website, and that's what's always been true. It's, it's a, a, an orientation, it's a, a way of looking, it's a way of respecting everybody and treating people as peers. Mm -hmm. And it's a way of organizing learning around your interests, what you're passionate about, what you're good at, and starting there and moving out. Now let's go back a year to summer of 2013, where I talked a little more about our approach and why we do the things we do on Youth Voices. But more importantly, I lay out the first three assignments we often give students, both in the summertime and uh, throughout the year. Youth Voices is a website um, that is a social network that we've been building in different ways over the past 10 years. On the site, students publish their own work, their digital work, and and they learn how to respond to each other, and we learn from all of that. We know that, that there are many, many processes in learning to read and learning to um, do research in, in, in taking texts apart, in, in, in the writing of, of something significant and important. How do you go from interest to deeper learning? Yes, there's a curriculum about the processes kids should do, but is there a content that they should do? Interest-based learning is so important in itself, and um, you know, medieval times and, and Greek civilization and, and or whatever global history or whatever science curriculum or curriculum itself is also important. And so what happens when those things bump up against each other? And so those are the kinds of issues that we thought we could explore together in the summertime. But what we know in the writing pro project is that starting with yourself is really, really important. Administrators, I think that they trust me to do things as I see fit, but sometimes I think that the, um, the issue is the how. Like, what are the words, like, in Google, if you were going to search for that question, you'd be able to find that question. Okay, we'll get back to that, okay? Brain, sir. okay, so you may notice that we just gave you three assignments. So you're going to write three paragraphs about yourself. You're going to make an avatar or icon. It can't be your likeness. It can't be a picture of you. Ten questions, real, real questions. Your neighborhood, your past, your future, uh, your family. Deep questions, things you have, questions that you have about yourself. Then 10 questions about the world, could be religion, politics, big questions. Do I have friends that are trustworthy? What does the modern man think about the modern woman? Are we actually being heard in society or ignored? What will I be, what will my 
my profession be? Why is bullying such a big issue? Like their surroundings that they live in, how does that affect their decisions and that will affect the way they live their life? Why am I quiet when I should be loud? Who invented language? Why will the government in Egypt stop murdering its people? Do I still believe that there's such thing as bad people? What kind of person do my friends portray me as? When I had a chance to help my brother, why didn't I? What is my identity? <clears throat> How much longer will the indigenous people of Latin America continue to suffer because of their own wealth? Doing the 10 self ten world questions and then what we follow that with is immediately is coming up with five keywords for each question and so that begins to give <laughs> categories, mm -hmm. gives categories to the questions. Um, my keyword, I, have, I put voices in society. I put helping. Reincarnation. Which topic? Well, the question was... Um, how much longer will the people, will the indigenous people of Latin America uh, continue to suffer because of their own wealth? Yeah. Did you try indigenous people? How do we just teach them to like love learning? I would probably start with the 10 world questions because that could probably get some thinking about, you know, the world and like probably how our history has formed these questions for them or help them think about these questions. Arik was the student who I originally saw her researching about um, Egypt because that's where her family So Arik, say your question again. Oh, oh, mine was, when will the government in Egypt stop murdering its people? But then when this whole story about Trayvon Martin and the, um, you know, the not guilty verdict came out, then she became interested in that. You, okay, you said Zimmerman free. What now? Well, like what happens to like the rest of that that just makes it to say that it's okay to shoot anybody that you think is suspicious might as well shoot me because you know i have a scarf on i might be a terrorist might as well shoot anyone else you know what i mean so if you set this guy free you allow society to like do whatever they want you know what i mean there's got to be limits there's got to be things you know what i mean that's just what i think what i guess concerns me though although i love the fact that she's studying something and she's learning something great about um, you know, our process as a, you know, country and what we go through and how we find these things out. Is that going to get her the skills that she's going to need? How many of you have done free writing to make something? In other words, free writing, and then you did a focus sentence, and then you did more free writing and more free writing. After you do the free writing, we're going to ask you to do a focus sentence. And a focus sentence is totally the opposite of free writing. Free writing, you go wild, you follow tangents, you... Allow yourself to go anywhere you want to when you're writing. You'll start with your questions, your, your two or three questions, and you'll write as fast as you can. Not as fast, but non-stop. It doesn't have to be fast, but you shouldn't stop. Well, um, Maury was describing the, the beginnings of the research process and how free rights were used to inspire further examination and helped him actually get to more focused topic. topic. And then you talked about subtopics. Yes. Like how your topic can lead to a subtopic. I mean, that subtopic you do research on will then lead to another, which was the process to get you to think, to get you to research more, to get you to learn more and more about your subject. From the ten self and ten world questions, students develop a oh, triad of questions, goes. three questions. We then had them look at the questions and see if they could chunk them into groups. Then we want to deepen your inquiry, and there are two choices here. One is to find a video or a podcast, audio, about your topic. Can you talk a little more about the video you annotated? Um, it, was, uh, um, it was a speech about Trayvon Martin that Obama gave. And I actually wanted to come out today uh, is not to take questions, but uh, to speak to an issue that obviously has gotten a lot of attention over the course of the last week, uh, the issue of the uh, Trayvon Martin ruling. How is it different annotating that, right, in popcorn, or just watching the video? I mean, annotating... You watched it the first yeah, time. Yeah, I watched it the first time, but like, 
I feel like once I got to annotate it, I like fully understood it even more because I had I had to like you know stop it, hear it again, and then annotate it, and then like make sure like the annotation goes with like the part of the video that I annotated, and I just feel like. I just feel like I fully understood it that way, that way. The other deeper way to go is we want you to think about finding more difficult texts. Um, the way schools talk about this now is text complexity. So we want you to find a more complex text about your topic. Okay? So the last thing I wanted to ask you about this whole process is how does this differ? Maybe it doesn't, but how? What do you notice about this process and maybe the process that you use at school to write an essay? At school, well, at, school, at my school, mm -hmm. there, we read books mm -hmm. and then we write about a literary literary element about the book, what literary element we see that was popular in the book or used in the book, so we write about that. Mm -hmm. We learn more about technology, like he taught us how to go on other websites and put them into Youth Voices. For example, with the Crocodoc, it's already in Youth Voices, right. but we learned how to do online on annotation and finding videos, like here. We I found a video on YouTube and I'm annotating it right here. We, we want everybody to know that that's our goal. Your question is three to five kids. All right, now uh, let's turn to a video from eight years ago um, in my classroom where we were doing very much the same kinds of things around 10 world, 10 self questions. It's important to understand that this work is based on the work of James A. Bean um, and uh, his work in democratic education and um, Paula Frere and his work with um, generative themes and obviously Peter Elba's work with uh, free writing and um, so yeah it's it's um, been important for many many years this kind of work um, leading towards students finding their passions finding what's um, at the heart of their curiosities and developing those together um, so here's a video from eight years ago Okay, so we're asking 10 questions about yourself, 10 questions about the world that you have. I see some people doing it easily and some people having difficulty. So, right there, please. What do you have? What will I do for a living? Why do I laugh a lot? And will I ever get a dog? You, you, those are real questions? I guess. Well, think about them. Make them real, okay? Make them think. I like your first question. What's your first question? Why am I only good at things that nobody cares about? What are you talking about then? Uh, I don't know. Uh, no. Well, no one's a really big fan of video games, and uh, I'm, I'm good. I have good hand-eye coordination. Uh, what else? I heard that. Oh. Video games is a good example. Uh, no one really cares about like board games either. Like, um, I'm good at chess. Now. I love good at, chess. Good at playing chess, but no one really cares about chess. No one's a big fan. And um. Things like that, like. Okay. Can you list those two, those two things, and if there's anything else, list there. Right. Chess and video games, like chess and video games, because okay. I think it's worth holding on to. So you're asking world questions right away. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what are your world questions? You me? Yeah. No, that's Come on. Um, why is the city a bad environment? Um, why does the city have to have drugs? Um, why is there not a lot of cops in the city? Okay. 
How do you what? Extinct. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. What's your question here? Will humans become extinct? Yeah. I want to know will humans be extinct? What? Will humans be extinct? What kind of person is that? Shut okay. up. It's okay. Come on. And will the world be covered in water? Okay. Keep going. What else? Will there be flying cars? <laughs> How was the Earth form? The Big Bang or what? And what will New York look like in the future? That's all I have so far. Okay. Cool. school. Okay. So why don't you make that um, homework? Something more general or study. Homework's one more. Homework. Homework is one word. Huh? Will students need to go to school in the future? Will they make sneakers that will make you fly? Will they be better places to chill? Or ever will they ever come to New York again, but cheaper? All right, so this was a bit of a mess. Uh, even though these ninth graders were great in how they handled it. Are you recording me? Yes. Will I go to a little college? Will I become a lawyer? <laughs> you skipped the first one, why? Because, I don't want to say that. I'm not going to say older than why. I got to say That's older. a good one. No. Okay, go ahead. What do you read? All right. Wherever, like the Yankees again. Why has to be Dominican? Why I like to study law? Why do I seem to look at the world different than others? Why do I have to be so confident? Why do many girls tell me because I get enough attention? And why do people consider me conceited? I said. That's why I know what kind of category I fall under for my age. Hi. So your question is, am I normal size? Yeah. <laughs> Does that make sense, right? Yeah, but doesn't look like self questions. What are they again? So we'll Thank you for taking the time to look at this issue of 10 self, 10 world questions, this issue of starting with kids' questions, their passions, their curiosities, and building out to um, generative themes um, that they can study and go deeper with. I um, want to refer you better to Curriculum Integration, James A. Bean's book, uh, especially Chapter 4, where a lot of the ideas around this um, came from. Um, and if you go to our page on Youth Voices, youthvoices.net slash questions, you can learn more about what we're up to here. And there are specific um, ideas. There's a link to the free writing uh, mission as well, which lays out uh, what to do once you have a group of questions or a question that you'd like to explore. And or um, there's Chris Sloan's recent um, taking an idea on a date, <laughs> uh, getting started, youthvoices.net slash getting started um, mission. Uh, again, I don't know how to say this more clearly. Um, I, I gave this this much time because it's, I, I think it's key. Um, a, a, a colleague I work with recently said to me, their questions weren't so good. And, and my, notion, my response to her was, well, let's go back and do it again. Because uh, our students do have passions. They do have curiosities. They do have important questions that they want to get started on and that they want to explore. Um, and I just um, want to say Youth Voices is a great place to do that. Um, we welcome you to this community if you'd like to join us. Um, and uh, let me know what you think of this, uh, I hope, um, limited and uh, focused notion that we're, we've been exploring here at youthvoices.net. Thank you for your time again. Bye.